Tuesday, everybody. For the Love of Dragons here, going live. Uh, my name is Araya Anra. If you haven't seen me before, I know we always have new members in the group, so it's exciting to see who's going to come on and uh, put this out energetically for all of you on the call and for those watching the replay. Uh, I try to do this every week, and it's only a very rare occasion when I don't. Um, all of these lives then are available in the archives of the group. They're also all immediately put on same day onto my YouTube channel. So if you ever miss a week and you're frustrated by that, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just go to Invoke Healing, or Invoke Healing International and look for the Dragon Playlist. Um, some of the links are usually somewhere in the group posts as well. But searching that, if you get that, then you'll have notification of every week's live right there and it's very easy to go back when you're looking for specific subjects or questions that are coming up for you to look through the titles of them and scroll back and very easily see or do a search on specific topics and there's a reason that I did that did it that way so that it would be easy to find um, because I, I talk about different things every week and sometimes things get repeated especially if it's been oh, a year or two since we discussed certain things uh, hello, hello, Taya, good to see you. Um, but what I do is answer questions every week or bring in topics that have been coming up for me a lot and I know that they'll be relevant for you. We discuss different activations or energies that are going on. So predominantly, of course, they have to do with dragons, but sometimes we get questions about other aspects of our spiritual journey, our ascension path. And then I have an opportunity to, to discuss those and how they fit in with the dragons. So tackling a question today, I had to sit with it, honestly. Um, it came in yesterday from a dragon up in Canada, and she's done the book club and got a lot of answers, but what was interesting is she's a natural healer and things are unfolding. And she's had these two terms start coming into her meditations and her field. And she was confused by it and curious because she didn't really understand um, what they meant or why they were coming in. And the word, and she's a French speaker natively, so even these terms that might be familiar to us sounded a bit different for her. And the, the names were Agartha and Shambhala. And for many of us, that, especially Shambhala, is somewhere in the back of our brain. We've heard it before, we know it's some kind of paradise kingdom. Um, especially if you study any Buddhist mysticism or things in the esoteric realm, typically Shambhala comes up, Agartha doesn't always. And quite honestly, um, I have a sense of knowing of them. I've had Shambhala definitely come across um, my plate, but I don't know a lot as far as explanation. And so I had to sit with it and feel into what do I know and then allow my guides, um, I actually went into a reading space, to allow my guides to bring me more. And part of the pieces that we're coming to share with you and why it's relevant for us as dragons here in this realm, uh, whatever part of your path is unfolding for you, is that terms like this, so these are coming up for her, but you may have other names pop in that you're unaware of, that you maybe haven't heard of, maybe you can't find them on, um, any kind of an internet search, and you have to sit with them and try and allow more information in. You can always send it to me and I can see what I can get, but this is how our guides drop clues in for us. They drop little breadcrumbs in to get us on that next path forward, to bring you in a certain direction that may or may not be the final direction or destination, but it's gonna branch you off of where you're at now to get you then to some further pieces that are gonna be discovered over here. So for me, there is a bigger part of understanding dimensional realities with this question because there is an explanation out there of Agartha being what might be considered a kingdom in the central core of the earth. So if there's a, an assumption or a uh, theory out there of the earth being hollow, that there could be a kingdom within it that is the kingdom of Agartha. And, um, that never read, that doesn't sit with me as far as a hollow earth, and yet I know that Middle Earth and Agartha both exist. They both exist within the earth in a way that we have to be able to understand multidimensional realities in order to actually wrap our brain around it. So if you need to visualize right now to get this um, a hollow earth, then go there. Allow it to be that. Um, but essentially, 
when we understand dimensional overlays or parallel realities dimensionally that are operating within the same space and yet in different dimensional bands, that will get you to a place of understanding a little bit better that there are doorways, much like, um, like a black hole is a doorway into somewhere else, or a wormhole is a travel zone between different places on a bigger scale. So if we look at power vortices, that those can be portals or doorways into other dimensional planes within the earth. Do we in our physical form know how to access and move through those yet? No, we don't. But those that have studied um, mysticism or deep meditative spaces, uh, I know that most of the energy around the Himalayas um, and the monks that live and practice there and seek their enlightenment, they're connecting to uh, a level of those energies. And what I found interesting, so just starting with the base layer of what you might find if you were to do an internet search, you might get the terms of Agartha being the whole kingdom itself, Shambhala being its capital city, um, other city like Telos, you might have heard the term Telos, uh, you might not have associated it with Agartha, um, Telos would be one that is supposedly under Mount Shasta, for example. Um, when I was in my reading space, I had a visual of a video pop in that I watched yesterday, actually, that came from a friend in South Africa who's one of my Dragon Hearts um, and in that group. So she shares a lot of really amazing things that I might not otherwise come across. And this was a webcam of the sky over Cape Town. And it had a several hour long footage of these light, these plasma ships coming in and connecting in, you could see it creates this plasma web and then 12 to 15 light ships moved through and they were just literally like uh, moving fields of white that were concise enough to be seen as separate um, energy fields moving in. And it dawned on me just in this reading that they were potentially accessing because the energy went down and through uh, and was embedding into, like rooting into the, the planet itself that there may be either an opening being created or an opening in and around Cape Town because it is um, a very significant um, chakra in the system for the planet and that this might also be one of those access points. So with this being a larger kingdom in a different dimensional reality that is still very connected to Earth, what I picked up in the, in the reading that I was given was that the um, residents of Agartha, which are these higher dimensional beings, uh, some of them might actually be our guides and guardians that are helping us to ascend or awaken so that we can access these dimensional planes. But that they are the sacred protectors of Gaia. Um, so many of them, there are many dragons there. Um, there are also other types of beings there. But that that realm was created um, closer dimensionally to Gaia's energy body. That they are essentially the protectors of her energy body specifically. and. That was a fascinating new piece of information for me to contemplate. You can take it or leave it. You can feel into it on your own. You can see if you can find any research on that. Um, I get this from my reading space and so I trust it and it felt it really resonated within me that they in a higher dimensional plane but still very connected to the earth would be assisting with the clearing out or the cleansing or the basic protective space that Gaia's energy body wouldn't be polluted or desecrated to too great of a degree that they manage that. And that anything where there are portals, and this ties it back into the dragons for us, that the portals then are guarded by the dragons, that they are the sacred guardians of all of the larger energetic matrices um, of this plane, and that they then become those. And so I actually do have, the first time I actually heard the term Agartha, was with one of my dragon hearts who in readings with her, um, it revealed who she be and that she is this very massive dragon, is very connected to Agartha, that she comes from that space. Um, so I might have to tap in to her directly and have a conversation and see what more she might know about Agartha itself, if she could enlighten me some more. Um, Shambhala itself is, is also sometimes translated as a piece of tranquility or a place of tranquility. And what I find interesting about that is it, it dawned on me because I had a very deep connection energetically with Shambhala coming up when I was doing a lot of meditation practice. Um, I've had visions and visuals of it, um, like inverting through the mountain in Tibet, like through Kailash, and it, it's 
uh, access point there and then you drop into it and I know that I've seen it in deep meditations and in this reading space just today um, I was shown that a big reason why we have um, this energetic over the Himalayas where there's this great number of monasteries and still Buddhist monk practices for like hundreds of square miles, right? There's Buddhist monks all across and their meditation practice is so that there's the reason for that is that this city of Shambhala, the capital city, holds such energy and is a very high energetic place within the Agartha realm that if that is sitting underneath Tibet, underneath the Himalayas, with um, the Sanja point for me is, is under Kailash, um, that that would naturally lend itself to a place on the planet that would allow that practice into those higher dimensional planes um, that the monks are seeking, that they're connecting into that stream of energy. And that made a lot of sense to me. My personal experience was when I was over, I knew for years I had to get to Tibet and to Kailash to do an activation and um, was pulled back there, uh, ooh, it's been a year and a half now already that I was there in um, September, October of 2019 to activate um, the mountain there and activate that portal and complete something there. I'll be honest that I knew the activation sites. I was there with an amazing group of people and we shared a lot about it afterwards. There's stories, um, if you go back on the YouTube channel to that October 2019 range, you'll see some of the stories from Tibet. But I knew there was something in my heart as the dragon that I am, as um, part of the Council of Mu, that there was a very big activation that had to happen there and that was one of the major responsibilities for me to get back to. I've had many, many lifetimes in that region, uh, many lifetimes as a monk um, in that practice, somehow being part of that maintenance of energy uh, and expanding myself in the human plane. But that when that activated, I had very deep resonance and remembering and connection with that energy of Shambhala and I felt it. And what I remember and recall very directly is when I was leaving, when we finished the three day Kora and we weren't even at the very end of the hike, but there was a place that I walked through that felt like a gateway. There were two dragons guarding it and it was a portal out of the energy of the field of Kailash. And I felt it as I walked through. It was literally one step to the next and I sort of stopped and went, whoa, wow, I just left. And then my heart got really, really sad because something within me said, I won't be coming back here. That, that my work here is done, that, that piece of responsibility has been lifted in my soul. And why do I share that story? That when I share stories like that, it's to trigger something within you because each of you that hear this have some level of a soul responsibility or some task that you've assigned yourself that you'll know when you've completed it to keep driving forward and allowing yourself to be guided forward until that comes. And this came in as well during this reading space of um, why this came up for this particular woman and why it's meant to be shared larger because there's a lot of healers that are involved in our dragon family. Um, I know that I am a healer and I have a massive amounts of energy that can move through my hands and through my being in a in a healing space, in a reading space that has always been extremely powerful from the moment that I remembered it, all of it. And what I was shown when I was in this reading space with Shambhala in particular, which is a part of the larger Agartha um, kingdom or region, civilization, that I was shown um, what looked like a human form that had, there was um, this green lightning being spread throughout uh, from healing hands, that there was green lightning coming and spreading through as if it was recalibrating or reawakening something within this, um, might have been a shadow body. Now that I think about it, 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 it did, it almost looked like a, a skeleton or a corpse, it was, it was just an outline and it felt like it was adding life force to it, that there was this green electrical energy and I tapped into and felt um, the connection with the, the energy of the Emerald Dragon. And I didn't have the Emerald Dragon nearby, so I grabbed the Peridot Dragon. Today, this is one of the canvas prints through the lair. Um, very similar energy and a very striking, definite deep earth energy that is definitely connected with this uh, kingdom and knowing that the deep earth dragons work within that and they cross back and forth within those realms. 
But seeing this green healing energy brought to my attention and why it needs to be shared that some of you may start feeling that wake up through your healing work, that our healing work is now being advanced to another level. And this is a very advanced society and there are also other advanced societies that are coming from different realms to assist um, with newer technologies for the human framework. But what I was being shown is that for this woman in particular and for some of you that will be listening, that this green lightning like healing energy is something to foster and allow to start working through you where you can practice with, uh, even on yourself or your animals, of working with it and seeing what and how it actually interacts and what it's doing. Because what I was seeing is it's bringing a spark of truth back into an energy body. And that this may be what's needed as we move forward and many come out of dark spaces. That as we shift forward there's going to be a lot of healing needed for those that have been fast asleep or operating in dark fields with or without their consent. Um, that will need this spark of truth to be lit up through the field. And how is that different than like a golden or a white Christed light that is also very useful in healing that predominantly is for bringing the soul level and the um, bodies. But this was about a spark through um, much like the energy body being the domain uh, of God, the energy body of God being the domain of those that are in Agartha that this tool is somehow used for the energy body and that for those that are needing healing that you might see or notice with particular beings that you're asked to assist with or that come across your path if there's a, a green electrical spark coming through try and tap into uh, what your guides might be able to show you about that or or Shambhala or Agartha or Telos or any of those cities where that healing frequency is available um, because it's connected with the energy that Emerald Dragon is about truth. It's about an individual's truth and realigning them to that. And so that spark of truth is different than the spark of life or the spark of divinity or that Christ of light that is an overall healing on a soul level. But this is about helping align a specific spark of truth back into um, the energy body of the person's of the person of their field. That there's a truth that has been lost that is so buried under shadow and darkness and that um, in that it becomes a bridge. So this is what's coming right now is that um, before one can turn and look upon the light of Christ or the light of God and that golden harmonic that that would be very scary to someone who's been in shadow for a long time or been um, in such a dark place and, and choices on a soul level that that is too big of a reach, that's too big of a juncture to go to right away, that it would make them you know, shield themselves and want to hide away again. And if we want to bring people into the light, we have to graduate it, we have to bring it very gently forward. And so this spark of truth, this green lightning healing energy comes in as a way to start bringing a very gentle light of truth back in that allows the person to start seeing truth, to start seeing reality as it is. So I, thought, I found that really interesting that that was the thread that came when she asked these two simple terms of what do these mean? What, what is the connection to this? And knowing that many of us as dragon are here to protect spaces like that, to protect other beings, to heal other beings, that many of the dragons are healers. And so that's a big piece of the information coming through. Um, I'm just gonna check because I wrote little notes down to make sure I didn't uh, forget anything here. Ah, the access points. Um. So one of the, th the other piece that I made a note to, to bring in was to pay attention to, I was shown that the access points to these where the portals are, is where, where there are magnetic anomalies on the surface of the earth. So things, places like um, the Bermuda Triangle, the Dragon Triangle, there's other, I believe there's at least 12 magnetic anomalies like the Bermuda Triangle. They're not as famous and maybe not quite as big, but they do exist around the planet, and that those are actually also portals into that dimensional reality. For those of you that need that piece of information, I'm not sure who needed to hear that, but um, knowing that there are some that are going to be on the replay, and others that it may trigger something for you later on, um, it felt important to bring that piece through. So I found it an interesting question this week. It's very different, um, both energetically to be sitting within and uh, as a question, because it's not a direct question to the dragons but very much um, aligned with all of our journeys and some of our responsibilities and some of our healing work that's coming forward 
And so I just want to bring that in. And I wanted to bring in too, I don't know if I felt very called to wear this one today. I don't know if you can see this incredible crystal uh, and amethyst pendant that somehow that, and I put this on before I even decided what question I was going to tackle today. And the um, energy of it feels very much connected to that very high frequency going into the crystalline core that would be a bridge also to getting to those spaces of knowledge. So um, these, I know that I mention it periodically, there are owners of these and the reasons that I, I brought them into the lair. Um, there's multiples and I have another exciting shipment coming soon of Andaran pendants with, with the dragons um, that I've just had created that hold a very specific frequency and, uh, frequency. and I know that each person that is meant to have them is actually, um, that there's already someone that they belong to. I just know that I was like the intermediary to get it <laughs> created and brought forward. So maybe one of you will be, you'll be seeing this and knowing that, oh, wow, that's actually mine. Um, so look on the layer and find that if it is, or one of the others. There's uh, some amazing stones that are wrapped in the, it's exciting to walk in that room. <laughs> the designer that's sending in, the, the artist who's actually sending them to me that I had commissioned um, said the, the whole workspace that she's in right now with the Andarans <laughs> is magnificently alive. <laughs> so I'm excited to get those. Um, anyway, I think that's it for today. If you have other questions that come either that are triggered by this discussion, put them in the comments of the video or send me a message. I typically respond or get um, instant message, uh, you know, the private messaging system through Messenger or email Araya at dragonwithin.com or Araya at invokehealing.com directly um, because those come very much more quickly. Sometimes I don't always ha have time in a day to get to the comments and so I definitely see them when they're a direct message to me. And I love answering them because I actually learned uh, a bit more or realized how much more I knew than I thought about these and it woke up another piece for me in my own healing work to recognize the, that green lightning type energy and what it means and what it is. So hopefully it was useful for you, for you guys. I look forward to seeing you next week and hearing whatever questions you guys might have. Other big piece, I, I can't believe I almost forgot to mention, next week we start our next book club. So a week from Thursday, if you guys have, I'll get to that Tina. If you guys have been wanting to do a book club and dive in for six weeks of amazing transformation and guided meditations, it is an amazing group and I do have some spots left right now. Again, just email me. Um, it is in post if you scroll down also in the group. And the lair, Tina, is um, dragonwithin.com forward slash lair, L-A-I-R. So if you go to the dragonwithin.com, you'll see one of the tabs at the top is for the lair. Go through and peruse. There's over 150 amazing dragon items that every one of them that gets sent out gets a unique transmission for the, the buyer. So if it's for, as a gift, let me know because then I do the transmission for the recipient of the gift. Um, that is about opening an energy of expansion for your journey forward, specifically the energies that you need to be in in the field for your guides and those dragons that might be around you to specifically guide you forward. Um, and they are pretty potent from what I hear from people that are receiving their goodies. They're like, whoa, this is amazing. I just don't want to take it out of my hand. I just want to hold it all the time. So uh, lots of different options there. All right, everybody have a great week. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.